How's it going, everybody? Today we're doing our annual gambling and taxes video. We're interviewing Russell Fox from Clayton Tax and Financial. How are you today, Russ? I'm doing fine. Clayton Financial and Tax. Oh, Financial and Tax. I had it backwards. So uh, <laughs> Russ is uh, pretty much the big uh, expert on gambling and taxes. And I'm here with always, as always, with my dad, Steve. Uh, so I guess before we hop into things, you want us to uh, give a little intro on yourself? I've been an enrolled agent for over 20 years. That's a federally licensed tax professional. Had my own business since 1999. Been in finance and accounting now, oh, nearly 40 years. I'm feeling old. Um, and I actually enjoy the world of tax. Somebody has to. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> exactly. Somebody has to. Uh, let, let me jump in here because I think we missed you last year. We've done these a few times, but I just want, before we start and explain to people what's involved in gambling taxes, is have there been any changes in the, in, I think in the past, it's always been pretty much the same from year to year, the, the way it works, but have there been any major changes since uh, we last spoke uh, two years ago? No. There have been no yeah. major changes. The big changes in the future will be for 20, the 2025 tax year. But nobody knows what they're going to be. And a lot is going to depend on the election cycle this November. Ah, yes. As always. <laughs> All right. So let's start with the basics here. How are gambling winnings treated for tax purposes? Uh, badly. That's the best <laughs> answer. Uh if you're an amateur gambler, you have to separate out your winning and losing gambling sessions. Winning sessions are other income. They go on schedule one. Gambling losses up to the amount of your winnings are an itemizable deduction on schedule A. If you do not itemize, let's say you have 3,000 of gambling winnings, 3,000 of gambling losses, but that's your only itemized deduction, you will pay tax on 3,000 of winnings because you would be taking the standard deduction. You take the larger of your standard or itemized deductions. Mm -hmm. That's how it's done on the federal level. State taxation gets messy because it'll depend on where you reside. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I got a question. So if you make it, if you do itemize and you make a deduction for your losses, uh, what do you need to do to prove those losses? You need to be keeping a gambling log contemporaneous written log or an app that shows what you're doing in a casino. It should show the date, the casino name, the game you're playing, as simple as blackjack, video poker, whatever. Start and end time and result. If it's a table game, you should note the table number. Okay. Lucky for us, uh, we have video evidence of all of our gambling <laughs> winnings for the year since we're now doing live play videos. So uh, not that I want to get audited, but we would have plenty of evidence if that, God forbid, that did happen. All right. All right. So, so let me just jump in here because um, most people, I think, when they say, oh, you know, I lost money. I, yes, I signed for uh, two jackpots this year, maybe uh, uh, $2,500 total. And say, so, oh, well, I'll just deduct my losses at the end of the year. So the bottom line is you cannot deduct your losses unless you itemize. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. Would you say that's a major uh, 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 misunderstanding that people have, Russ? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and the situation for a lot of people is that they wind up paying taxes on money that they haven't actually won because... If you're issued a W-2G, you have to count that as income for the year. So if you have $2,500 in wins, you have to say, I had $2,500. You're increasing your income by $2,500. And if you do not itemize, uh, you cannot deduct your losses. And if you lose back $5,000, even though you won $2,500, you're, you're down $2,500 for the year, you still have to pay taxes on that $2,500 unless you have, uh, unless you're going to itemize. So, so that's the big uh, problem that we always see with tax. I'm sure you, you, you see it that way too. But uh, now for people who do itemize, people in, have to keep in mind that they're going to have to itemize. So should they keep a journal every time they go to the casino? Yes. Or, or for the average person, because they may not know if they hit a jackpot at the end of the year, you know, uh, should they start from the beginning of the year and keep a journal no matter what, anyone? 
Yes. The okay. rules on this have been out since the mid 1970s and the tax court and the IRS have no sympathy for people who don't keep records. If you're going to engage in gambling on a regular basis, you should be keeping your own gambling law. It is literally that simple. And if you do, your situation will be a lot easier from a tax standpoint. If you don't, it won't. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other ways of showing your losses. Uh, you can get win-loss statements from casinos. You, if you use your card, uh, Caesars card, MGM card, or every, every casino today offers one, you can get win-loss statements. We encourage our clients to get those. They're typically available by the end of January. And But if you look at them carefully, there'll be a disclaimer on every single one that says, we think they're right, but we're not really sure. The IRS likes them, though, because they're on paper. The IRS believes every piece of paper is accurate, which really is the opposite from a contemporaneous log. The contemporaneous log will be accurate. The gambling records of a casino, there can be, and there always are, machine faults. Or what if you forgot to use your card one day? Mm -hmm. What if you're deliberately not using a card? Okay, now one thing I've always heard, and I believe uh, you said this the last time we interviewed you, is uh, that no matter how much you win in a casino, even if it's only $5, you should report those winnings to the IRS. Is that true? And is that still true? Yes, yes. There is no de minimis amount of income. If you earn $1 in a casino, you are supposed to report it. Mm -hmm. Am I not naive? Of course not. I am, you know, I am, I'm not naive. Okay. Do most people report if they go in a casino and win $5? Of course not. Are they supposed to? Yes. That is black and white tax law. Have you ever heard no of such, oh, go ahead. There's no such thing as no paperwork. No, no, doesn't have to be on your tax return. Have you ever heard of anyone that's gotten in trouble for not reporting small wins like that? Yes, but it was because they had a major win. Oh, okay. They had a major win that they didn't bother to report. They won a car at a drawing in a casino, got audited. They did report it, but the um, auditor was wondering why in the world there wasn't any other gambling on there. Mm. Yeah, and, I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, let me, yeah, I, I got a question on, on the log, the gambling log you have to keep. So it, is it a 24 hour day? How, 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 is your, how is your gambling day? And, and uh, let's say you, you win on some machines, lose on others. So you have to record your either net win or net loss for that day? Uh, no, you record it by session. So let's say I oh. started at 11 at night, I ended at two in the morning, that's one session. Mm -hmm. The only time you have to look at the end of a day is the end of the calendar year. Mm -hmm. Because you're adding up session wins and session losses, it really doesn't matter from a tax standpoint whether you win on a specific day or not. A session could be an hour, it could be five hours. It's very unlikely to be like 24 hours because it's hard to sit at a casino for 24 hours straight and be playing. Mm -hmm. Much less without a bathroom break or anything like that. Well, a bathroom break could be part of a mm -hmm. session if you step up and use the restroom for a minute or two, uh -huh. that's not a big deal. But mm -hmm. if you're, you know, you play from say 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., those are separate sessions. Gotcha. And then now, uh, how are table games players treated differently than machine players? From a tax standpoint, they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, table games and, and machines are taxed identically. The difference is most table games do not generate tax paperwork. If you, for example, play blackjack and win $10,000, you're not getting a W2G. If you win $10,000 on a slot machine, you are. Is it possible to trigger a W2G from a uh, table play? Yes. There are plays, typically bonus plays on various table games that absolutely can trigger a W2G. Um, for example, in Pi Gao, there's a dragon bet. Mm -hmm. And if you win the super jackpot, I'm not sure the exact name, 
you will probably get a W2G because it meets the standard, which is odds of 300 to one or more and a prize of $600 or more. Interesting. Gotcha. Yeah, I have a friend that, um, do they always take the tax out immediately at the table? It'll depend on the the game and what it is, but typically for that kind of win, yes, there will be some withholding. Okay, yeah, because one of my friends, he was uh, <laughs> playing Ultimate Texas Hold'em down here, and he hit one of the progressives. It was like forty or sixty thousand or something on a one dollar bet, and he said they took the tax out right at the table. I wasn't sure if that was normal or not. Russ, I, I want to jump back. I'm still back in the gambling log here. Uh, so, so when you're recording your session. What do you do about free play? Is that considered winnings or or how do you treat that in your gambling box? Well, most free play, if you're awarded, say, $100 of free play, you can't cash that out for $100. You actually have to play. So let's assume I have a free play of $100 and cash out $30. I have $30 of income. If you think about it logically, I have turned nothing into $30. I have an accession to wealth that $30 would be income. You did not lose $70 because you could never cash out the 100. Okay, yeah. so just count whatever you have left over to uh, when you run it through as income for the session. Okay, that explains that, thanks. Now, I guess uh, online casinos are starting to get more and more popular. So let's touch on that a bit. Is, um, are the, when it comes to uh, triggering tax forms and all that, would the table games at an online casino be treated like a physical uh, table game in a uh, land-based casino, or are they treated more like an electronic, like, uh, or do online casinos even trigger W-2s? If we're talking about licensed casinos in the U.S., not an offshore one. Uh, there absolutely can be W-2Gs from online casinos. Mm -hmm. there are, I've seen them. Um, with table games, it depends. Some of it is, a lot of it is dependent on what the general counsels of each of these casino companies have determined. Whether it is a table game of, let's just say blackjack. Mm -hmm. If you walk into your local casino and play blackjack, you're not getting a W2G. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you play online, the question is, is it a table game or is it an electronic game? With a, with a slot machine or electronic game, there's the $1,200 rule. Mm -hmm. So some casinos online are issuing W2Gs for table games like that. Mm -hmm. Some are not. <laughs> so unfortunately, it depends. I've seen mm -hmm. one for like $300,000 where the person won about $3,000. Mm -hmm. Because oh every, every win... <laughs> Okay, he was oh, getting very large uh, amounts, was triggering a W2G. Uh, Every loss wasn't. His session result was plus 3,000. And there's a way on a tax return to adjust for sessions. When you have W2Gs that total 300,000, but your real session win is 3,000. Yeah, because I have, uh, I know that uh, in South Florida, most of the casinos, the paramutual facilities down here are not allowed to have real table games. So they have the electronic table games. And like this, but the weird thing is, is the way it works is like, say you're, you're playing blackjack, you bet $600. It takes your $600 at the beginning. And then if you win, even though you're, it says you're getting a $1,200 win, even though you're really only winning $600 and it triggers a W2G. I got I got hit with that one one time because I wasn't thinking about it. Learned my lesson the first time, though. Well, slot machines are when you win a slot jackpot mm -hmm. in the casino, it's based on gross, yeah. not net. Mm -hmm. So this is true of if you pulling a handle on a slot machine, let's say you're winning <laughs> $500 and you win $1,200. That will trigger a W2G. Oh, I never thought that about win that is way. 700 Hmm. Never thought about it that way, but yeah, that does make sense. Okay, I'm ready to back jump in back uh, jump back into the gambler's log again, right? <laughs> <laughs> but hit, hit, here's this stuff. I guess if you're playing at an online casino where all your play is tracked, that would be a very accurate uh, gambler's log, and you wouldn't have to 
keep track on your own. The win-loss statement, you mean? The win-loss statement. The win-loss statement should be accurate, but you should still keep your own log. Still. We just strongly wow. recommend it. Wow. Um, the other thing is, what about bonuses? A lot of online casinos give you bonuses. Oh, uh, yeah. Not be recorded <laughs> on the win-loss statement because it's not a win or a loss of your play. They should be, but we've seen cases where they're not. That hmm. makes sense. Well, we're going to get to the end of this interview, and you're still going to be asking questions about the gambling log, Dad. I am. Oh, one last question, Ross, about the gambler's log. 